Steve Mariucci came in on Friday's program. <laughs> Now, we were going to talk about the schedule release show from the night before, but when Mooch comes, you know, I never know. Like, we just chopped it up. We told old, <laughs> yeah, some old-time stories. It was, it was awesome. great. So I finally got him to tell a story that I knew he had never told publicly. And it was based off one of the most iconic football photographs you'll see, and 49er fans know it on site, that moment in Candlestick Park when um, Bill Walsh took a knee and drew up a play in the dirt with Joe Montana. And Mooch told the story publicly that he had never told publicly before of him purposefully calling a timeout during a game to try and get a similar photograph of him with Steve Young, <laughs> even though Steve Young had no idea Not what in. was going on. Not in on All right. Here, here's the story in case you missed it. Boiled down to just a, a minute plus. Go for it. So now I'm coaching the 49ers. You're the actual coach. Of the I'm actually coaching the 49ers. And Joe, you know, he wasn't. He's, he, I didn't coach Joe. He was gone. Steve Young was there. We're playing a game. We're playing a game, and we're winning pretty big. Second quarter, second down. And I'm looking around, and up, boom, there's Mike Segaris. Mike Segaris is right on the sideline. And I went, boom, oh, my God. That's probably where he was sitting or kneeling when he took that photo of Bill Walsh and Joe Montana. So I went, time out. <laughs> <laughs> you called a timeout in an actual NFL game. Absolutely no reason to call a timeout at all. All right? Steve looks at me and goes, What? Timeout. Come here. And he goes, Why? I go, Come here. So as he's approaching, I take a knee. Oh, yeah, I'm going to pose for this picture. I don't give a shit. So, so I, I, I come down, take a knee. And I'm waiting for Steve to come and take a knee right next to me on the field, right? So all of a sudden, our, 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 our equipment guy, Kevin Lartique, he goes, Steve, you want some water? And I'm sitting right there, and he took a right. He goes over there, and he's, he's getting water on his helmet with Greg Knapp and all those other guys. And I'm sitting here like this. <laughs> This is not what I was thinking about right here. Steve Young's supposed to be here with me. He's over there drinking water. And then I go, okay, so I'm going to have to do it some other time here. And they came back up. And here comes Steve. goes, what? I go, ah, nothing. Good job. Let's go back in the game. <laughs> you didn't get the picture. And joining us now on the Rich Eisen Show, Mercedes-Benz Vance phone line is the Hall of Fame quarterback who had no idea what was going on at the time. Now, I guess has now been read into the situation, the great Steve Young. How are you, Steve? Rich, now the other side of the story, right? <laughs> I mean, when you have Mooch, there's always two sides of the story because Mooch is always in his own kind of world. And that was the perfect example of Mooch out there on his own uh, on an island. You know, I, I turned to like, uh, uh, I turned to Teak and I said, is Coach all right? I thought he was going to throw up. <laughs> I, I, didn't know, I didn't know. You know, the idea that he was wanting to recreate an iconic photo down on the ground at Candlestick Park on a Sunday afternoon at 2.15 in the second quarter of a Falcons game on second and five is only Mooch. Only Mooch could have that going on in his brain and then go down to a crouch and have all of us wonder, is, is he all right? He might be sick. I think, he's, I think he might be sick. <laughs> so you remember this moment then? You remember? Because well, we, we laughed about it. Because like, Mooch, what are you doing? You know? What, 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 Mooch was, uh, look, there are uh, countless Mooch stories. I, one of my favorite humans, as you know, Rich, yes. you feel the same way about him. Yes. I mean, the love that I have for Mooch is uh, not – typical for a coach and a and a player i mean he's just some guy that was like a big brother family you know the connections were amazing and so uh you know he was so vulnerable you know, like the fact that he tell you that story i mean it's a goofball story <laughs> that he wanted he dreamed of having a picture of i, I don't know who dreams that i don't know only mooch would dream that well i mean he saw the photograph and he thought about it so now so when you heard that he he was a, what his true intentions were, you did not know at the time, right? That he wanted no, to do that, right? No, no, no idea. But you know what? I, here's the funny thing: is that Mooch calling timeout in a weird place was not that unusual. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just 
It just wasn't that. It wasn't, well, it wasn't a shock. <laughs> and it might have been, you know, hey, we needed a... Because he would do it. He'd come on the sidelines and say, what was that about? I don't know. I just felt like you guys needed a break. You know? I was like, oh, all right. Thanks, Mooch. I appreciate that. Well, but, so, so you never knew. You never knew. You had to kind of just go with Mooch. Mooch was a... Uh, which has, he's at his own program. So then when you heard the story, now you remembered the time, and now you understand he wasn't sick. Well, I mean, he wasn't v- physically sick. I thought he sick. might be sick. Yeah, I thought, we all wondered if he was okay. Oh, my god! And uh, he popped up. And, but, you know, there's, a, uh, there's the other one in Green Bay when his ears were frozen, uh, and, you know, we come to the sidelines, and, and I go, Mooch, your ears, are, you're going to fall off. They look like they might be. They've turned red and now white. He goes, Steve, with this head of hair, you can't cover it up, man. I'm like Cindy Crawford with, uh, with the, you know, you don't put a, a heavy coat on Cindy Crawford, bro. Is that what he said? Is that... Yeah. You got, this hair does not get, <laughs> this hair needs to be out. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right, so then I guess, in, in all fairness, did you ever audible something that Mooch didn't know? Like, is there something that in, in your... Oh, yeah, of, well, you, know, I, I, you know, if there's <laughs> countless uh, stories of, uh, well... You know, because he and Mike Holmgren are be- best friends, right? And they kind of grew up, you know, Mike got Moocher, kind of like big brother, little brother, too. And so it was, I, I enjoyed Mike Holmgren, you know, his neck would, you know, you get him mad. Mooch, Mooch, I couldn't get him as mad as, as Mike. You know, Mooch would, he had, a, he, had a, he had a safety valve that wouldn't let him get so upset. So he'd get mad, and then he'd be like, oh, sure, sure, tell him whatever, you know, and he'd just shake it off. Where Holmgren and Mike was... He, he didn't have a valve, and so his head would start to get bigger and redder, and it, like, it would look like it would explode. So I enjoyed torturing Mike more than Mooch, but they were both fun to have fun with and do things that, you know, would frustrate them. Like, you know, time out, come over here. And they're like, no. But I'm going to talk to you. Like, I'm not coming over. <laughs> like, I'm just going to – and then I would just turn away and then uh, and uh, in the huddle, and then guys would say, Mooch, she's freaking out. She's freaking out. He's coming out on the field. I'm like – I'd walk further. Like, I'd go <laughs> over to the visitor's side. Like, if you want to keep, come out halfway on the field to try to get me, oh, I'm going. I'm just going to go over closer to my dick or whoever's over there, you know? Like, we're just going to – I'll wave at him and say, what's going on, coach? You know, the other side of the field because, you know, I'm not going to – not giving in. Oh, and uh, Mooch would – it was fun. Well, fun the stuff. funny thing is, Steve, is that, you know, he, want, he I guess you got him at the lowest to the ground ever – unbeknownst to you because he wanted to take a photograph with you and and uh, recreate it and you definitely got him the highest he's ever been either because the, there's a photograph i know that's in his office of him leaping in the air on that that's throw to terrell owens story. that's an amazing picture that's an amazing it's amazing they caught him that way because you know mooch i'm sure he was a great athlete like holmgren again Coach Holmgren played at USC, mm-hmm. you know, in front of OJ. Like, you know, and we always made fun of him. He never threw it. He just tossed it back, backwards. But he, uh, but Mooch, I'm sure, was a great athlete. But by the time I ran into him, I just don't know if that was quite as evident. <laughs> and and so to see him le- a good 36 inches levitating yes. off, the, off the ground, and you know why, because all the emotion of that moment is across the field. It's Mike Holmgren and... Packer, where I was born, and you know, Uber, you know, how many times you heard the stories about living up in the Uber and <laughs> Upper Michigan, and, uh, you know, so it was all, so all that levitation was all the emotion that he felt at that moment, and only Mooch could, um, you know, because you, he's, he's got all that emotion, so I, I, I could go, we go on for hours about Mooch, but the fact that he wanted to recreate an iconic, like, Marilyn Monroe with the dress and the, and the fan, you know, like, he wants to recreate these images in his mind of i'm bill walsh you know and i want to feel like i'm bill walsh just for a minute you know, only <laughs> that, you know? well he told me steve when i showed me that photograph of him leaping in the air as you're throwing to owens in that famous he caught it he caught it moment is he knew that you had to get the ball over the linebacker and that was his body language to help you get the ball over the linebacker yeah a lot of well that's that's, he said. when i finished my career rich um i had a concussion and then it was a big deal and and I kept telling Mooch, I'm fine. Why don't you stop? You're being weird. And only Mooch can turn to me with it, like in tears, and tell me the love that he had for me. And if I, I'm your, if I was your father, I will not give you. You know. So like Mooch is soup to nuts. Like he's all in he's in every beautiful. way. So when you think about that, that kneeling down that picture, you got to know Mooch is in, and every 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 way in your life, wanting to make sure that you, you do well. So he's, uh, he's an amazing human.
Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.